Okay, hey everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the stream today. So, uh, a couple things to sort of go over here as we get into our next project. If you can't tell from our our lovely stream title, we're moving on from our, our Call of Duty goodness and, and t starting to look at some Dark Souls stuff. Also, <laughs> Swab Squad, James. I can't believe I didn't think of that for our, our like subscriber name. I'm definitely going to have to like make some animations for that and stuff too. I love it. Um, so thanks, Suave Squad, for joining. Get some likes and subscriptions in the chat. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, okay, so uh, today I want to I want to take another. <laughs> to think of you. Yeah. Um, I want to take another sort of stab at some more voice controller tech um, in some other games. So for those of you who are here for the first time, um, we sort of have been talking for a few weeks now about this sort of larger project for. Uh, better voice enabled and, and supportive keyboards and stuff for both gaming and regular computer use to uh, sort of enable uh, basically just voice interactions in ways that you'd want to use them a little bit differently than we're used to and to help with uh, a lot of accessibility issues that we currently have in the sort especially in the gaming world uh, but also in the rest of the world that we live in um, so what I want to do today is explore a different type of game. Previously, we did this for Call of Duty, specifically in Warzone, but worked outside that too, uh, where I want to build some voice and conversational interactions that will work with Dark Souls. So uh, it'll follow all the same sort of mechanisms and builds. It's just a, it's a very different style of game. So when we're talking about building things for Call of Duty, it's all about like real-time actions that are happening in multiplayer. It's a first-person shooter style game. Dark Souls being a third-person RPG that's single-player for the most part in terms of like its primary form, but obviously there's some multiplayer mechanics in it. Um, and, and really the goal is to enable some voice interactions to actually execute things in game that are supplementary to what you can do with your hands, whether it's on an Xbox controller or, or mouse and keyboard if you're a monster uh, like me that is, uh, didn't realize you could use an Xbox controller for Dark Souls when they first started playing. So... I wanted to sort of use these two as our first stepping stones into this larger project, mostly because uh, Call of Duty is very hot right now in terms of its massive user base uh, or player base. And basically, if we're going to try to build a controller that's going to work really well for many different types of people, we should do it and try it out in a game where many, many people are playing. Uh, and then on the other side of things for Dark Souls, it's sort of touted as the most uh, difficult series of games that, that's out there in terms of it just sort of being very demanding in terms of perfecting movement and controls and um, timing and everything else. And it punishes you if you don't do it well. Uh, you die and it takes a while to get back and, you know, it's a, it's a pain. So I wanted to sort of capture sort of both ends of the difficulty spectrum with trying to prove the technology before we go about building it for a larger scope uh, and doing it in sort of mass and, and being able to ideally be able to just provide a device where people to sort of plug in and they can start using their voice interactions once they register it to their account or something like that. Um, so real quick, we'll, we'll review the architecture that we're gonna go through in terms of this build. Uh, I do also wanna build a Twitch bot for it so you all can, can ruin my game while I'm playing too. Uh, I also wanna build a chat bot for it. That way when I have friends over, shout out James and Avery, uh, when you come over to play Dark Souls, that way I can sabotage you guys while you're playing, uh, or and vice versa, just by typing into chat. And then um, I also want to obviously do the voice controller stuff with virtual assistants, and I think we're also going to bring it back to uh, the sort of homebrewed virtual assistant world uh, with the Android app using Spokestack's tool, which we should be able to do in time for the rest of the export to independence contest that's going on. So we'll come in swinging with three submissions into that uh, for Find My Rep. Uh, Warzone controller and now Dark Souls controller. So real quick, we're going to hop back into Microsoft Paint and go over the architecture uh, and sort of the, the design and flow of data and how this whole thing really works. So basically, we have all of these different channels for how we actually want to communicate stuff. We're going to have Alexa. We're going to have Google Assistant. We're going to have uh, Twitch chat. We're going to have a web-based chat. And then eventually, we're going to have um, an app like our actual Android and iOS app. Now, each of these work a little bit differently in terms of how they handle interactions, but in the end, we basically just need to deal with either the strings or the intent or basically what we're actually doing. So we're gonna build and host an API. Uh, it's all gonna be written in, in .NET and C Sharp. Uh, so this is gonna be our API that can handle all of the different inputs from these different devices. 
And then this API is going to send information over to my machine to an app uh, over WebSockets or HTTP, whatever is, is available, depending on if we host this for free or not, uh, to our desktop app. So we've got our app, and then we've got our, our handy dandy Leonardo, uh, Arduino Leonardo that we then send serial commands over um, and then this sends stuff back to you know our, our sort of host machine that's running this app as well. Uh, and then that's actual keyboard commands. So in the end we get true USB keyboard execution um, that's happening as if we were actually putting a microphone in the keyboard uh, round trip. It's just sort of going through a couple of different uh, hops on the network to get there. So we're going to follow this exact same architecture for its, its sort of baseline principle uh, for Dark Souls. And basically the only thing that's going to change between what we did for Call of Duty or, or our Warzone voice controller in Dark Souls is uh, just the list of commands that we can execute um, and the types of things that we can do. So the first thing I want to do is actually, I think, take a little bit of a different approach to what we did to Warzone and maybe even just hop into Dark Souls and just play around a little bit, get an idea for what types of controls we want to have. We can start our new profile and then we'll hop back out um, and and uh, basically take a list of that. So as we're going through it, if, you know, if you're sitting in chat, let me know what you think makes sense for types of things that we should be able to do with our voice, these sort of supplementary actions and things. Uh, and then we'll make those happen, just collect a list of them and stuff like that. Uh, so let's, uh, let's load up Steam and hopefully I don't have to sign in on stream and we can uh, just hop into Dark Souls here. Okay, so currently I have Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. Uh, there's your, your Steam ad of the day. Um, but I, I think I only have <laughs> 3 installed on this machine still. So we're going to do it for Dark Souls 3, but essentially the same mechanic should work. Uh, because I, between those three games, I don't think the controls changed very much. It's still the same uh, attack and, and everything else. Um, and I'm going to play on keyboard for now, uh, even though I normally play on, on a gamepad. Uh, that way we can actually emulate just uh, the gamepad controls. And I'll, I'll play it in this windowed border mode just uh, that way we can have all the other stuff running too. But I'll, I'll change the settings. Because last time we tried to do this and we were like, frantically pivoting to something else um, we had to, to switch to this bordered mode so actually let me switch it back from window to full screen and hopefully you all can still see me am I am I still here hello stream uh, we're gonna keep all right now I gotta figure out how to go back okay thanks James um, escape is not helping me I can never remember my keyboard controls can I just maybe I just need to actually try to plug in my Xbox controller although last time I did that things went uh, very very wrong um, but we can try it so let me try to plug in the Xbox controller for menuing and things and hopefully you all can still can you still hear me see me all that good stuff is this actually picking it up or not he should say go fast. <laughs> oh no. Hold on one second. Let me let me switch my camera off so you don't have to look at me here. Oh. Just trying to get the uh the gamepad to work. I think I because I technically have like two plugged in. It's uh giving me a bit of a problem here and now I can't like menu away back what is the same as B <laughs> why is this so difficult has anyone played Dark Souls with a keyboard and know how to do this here's what we're gonna do we're gonna unplug I think this maybe this Please be this before I just disappear in front of you all. Aha, okay. Now we're gonna replug this in. Uh, gamepad is tech is a sort of more technical term for both either a controller, I've got an Xbox controller, but I've also got 
um, a Razer uh, or whatever this is, uh, Tartarus V2. Technically, these both register to the operating system uh, as USB game pads. And I'm pretty sure Windows only lets you have one plugged in at a time uh, in order for it to recognize. So now that I've unplugged this one, so why the lights are off, uh, this one, and I've got my Xbox controller, now I can menu my way through it. So now let's start a new game. And I'll even let you guys watch the cutscene if you haven't played this game before. Poor guy. Do you think uh, YouTube is going to end up giving me copyright grief if I let this whole thing play all the way through and then eventually upload this? James! <laughs> My sources say yes. Yeah, rip. You can't forget Yorm. Probably the best Lord of Cinder. <laughs> Alright, that'll do. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. For those who haven't played Dark Souls before, uh, that is about as uh, clear as the lore will get. So welcome to having to dig into all of the details. And you know, we can actually run a whole stream just talking about the lore, but instead we're gonna write code eventually. Uh, so for this one, we're gonna call ourselves Suave. Uh, we basically just are gonna, what? Give me that. Suave, there we go. Uh, we are male, we are super young. Um, and then for class, this actually could make a difference in terms of how we play and the types of controls we have. So basically, there's some mechanics in, in Dark Souls around different types of combat. So there's melee combat, and there's a bunch of different things within that. Uh, there's shields. There's probably there's someone in here that starts with um, the twin blades, right? I thought. Maybe not. Um, oh yeah, the mercenary, where you, you can have not just a shield, but you can have uh, dual-wielded weapons, which changes the controls and mechanics a little bit. Um, there are also different types of magic, so there's sorcery, there's pyromancy, and then there's miracles, and they all run through the same general like magic spec and, and mechanics, at least in terms of how we're going to think about it for automating with voice, uh, where basically you can say cast spell, but it could be like in the case of like uh, miracles you might want to say uh, cast heal or something like that versus like fireball or lightning bolt all three of those commands are technically different types of magic and how we want to try them out especially like not trying to get halfway through the game to try them out um, means that we need to pick a certain starting class so I, I think I want to do something with magic that way we can prove that out um, and between these two clerics are trash because miracles and dark souls 3 are bad so probably between pyromancer and sorcerer uh, the question is, do we want to cast, like, soul spells, or do we want to cast <laughs> uh, fire? And I kind of like the idea of just yelling, fireball, fireball, and making that work. So I think we'll probably go with pyro. <laughs> Hashtag spell go pew pew. Yeah, 
we're gonna we'll set up our pew pew um utterances for for casting uh burial gifts we probably want something related to that then uh gems are gonna be useless to start souls are probably fine maybe even just a uh a life ring that way we can stay alive a little bit longer <laughs> executioner zero uh miracles are not good not in this game dark souls one they're overpowered as hell but um all right we'll just uh probably grab a preset because i don't want to have everyone wait for like an hour kind of like this one where his eyebrows just like make his eyes not even visible from the top of his head and it kind of just looks like he's sad and uh, we'll, we'll just go with this sort of uh, default. Okay, so we're, we're going to hop into the game, and then um, let's, let's just sort of walk through the different mechanics and, and see what type of stuff we, we want to actually execute. And um, I feel like I need another mechanism to write this down. I'm probably going to keep it down on my phone since we're playing on full screen here. But in chat, um, as we go through it and, and we sort of name the functionality, we should definitely start thinking about the uh, the types of utterances and things we'd want to say, chug for Estes. So that's a great suggestion. <laughs> Should be like drank, <laughs> pour up, chug, chug for smashing Y. We'll be able to do we'll be able to do like chaining or queuing of actions, when, especially when we get to the custom stuff. Um, also, oh my gosh, last time I tried to play this on stream, we did it with the keyboard and it was miserable. I'm so glad I have the controller back. Um, okay. So right away, uh, let's t let's talk about sort of like melee first, then we can get into like um, non melee mechanisms and things like that, and, and then get into spells. So let me get like a notepad up on my phone uh, so that I don't forget half of this stuff. Where is my notes app or like OneNote or something? Notes, Samsung Notes. You're gonna do okay. We're gonna title this Dark Souls Voice Commands. So keep in mind, some of these things we could be probably, and I probably kind of want to actually, a little bit smarter than what we did previously with the Warzone controller. So for Warzone, we we really didn't do anything uh, complex. It was always just one-way commands. You pass in a string or a word or a couple of words, and it did a certain thing. But in this game, we might be able to take advantage of some other mechanisms and even some fun things too. Um, that will take slots. So for example, we could say like attack twice or heavy attack and they could run through the same intent and process but actually could like operate a little differently. Um, okay, so on the melee side, we've got light attack. So let me just write some of this down. We've got light attack and heavy attack. And another interesting thing, I think this is true in this game, heavy attacks are kind of like uh, held and they do like a certain bit more. Yeah, so like if you hold there's like an even heavier attack and the amount of time that you hold that heavy so this would be like a right trigger in this case like if i just tap the right trigger it's that if i hold it kind of wind up a bit more does a bit more damage uh so that's an interesting thing we might want to take advantage of i'm just going to put in here a note for wind up because that could be something like heavy attack versus super heavy attack and that's simple but it could also be like heavy attack for like a one second heavy so it'd be like one Mississippi drop versus like a full one or something like that. Um, we've got parry. That's going to be an important one. If we're going to get good at parrying, uh, which I'm usually not. <laughs> um, we've got holding shield. That's another one too that like timing is going to be important. Because if we just say like shield, it'll just be like boom. We tapped our shield and then we just kind of sit here and say shield, 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 shield. But if we say like hold shield. Maybe that can be like a default mechanism, or we can say shield for like a certain amount of time. Um, so let me write that down. We got shield uh, with time potentially. Uh, we also have the ability to two hand weapons. So in this case, if I hit Y, I'm now two handing the weapon. And now the same buttons I was using for shield have a little bit of a di different mechanism where it's like weapon art. Uh, so if I now hit right trigger there, I basically have this like rage mode I go into, which I think in this case for this weapon just lets me do extra damage. Always shield all the time. AKA the way that I ran Dark Souls 1 the first time, just like, I'm fine, everything's fine, this is fine. Before I learned how to actually roll and parry and get good. Okay, so we've got weapon art. That's another one. Um, weapon art, <laughs> turtle forever. 
I'm still a little upset we lost our turtle in the cutscene in the intro. Okay, so still two-handed here. We still have block. It's almost, it's not even necessarily shield, but it's it's block because technically you don't need a shield to block. Like I'm blocking right now with my axe, even if it doesn't really block much damage at all. Um, there's we also need to be able to swap weapons on both sides. So like if I hit right on the D-pad, I switch to nothing on my right hand. We have like swap uh, right swap left so if i swap on my left here i've got my my little pyromancy flame in my hand so now i can also cast spells um people in chat who have played dark souls anything i'm missing so far on just the basics of right hand left hand mechanics that we're going to want to capture with voice and then we'll get into spell stuff and my oh my gosh i don't even <laughs> i don't even remember how to do the bow stuff we have to like aim down sight with the left trigger we might just want to make that like a whole, almost like a macro, just like shoot with bow. Because I, I don't think it's going to be worth it to do like holding down, like trying to like do navigation with the bow. But if we have like the difference between like, hey, if, if I'm using my left hand and I'm holding aim on my bow, I could still say shoot or attack or whatever. And that would actually like still do the release. Yeah, that would be a totally different rabbit hole. And I just don't even think it's like the right like i guess uh type of thing to do with voice be like move slightly left no s more slightly left all right up about an inch okay now shoot it just feels silly um but we're still we could do something where we just do shoot with the bow like just say like use bow and it just like aim down sight shoot real quick all is just sort of one mechanism um all right but let's talk about spells real quick so interesting thing here that's going to happen some people will equip their their spell or in this case pyromancy right if i can equip it oh my gosh gestures sorry i'm, I'm getting a, a little too far ahead of myself we'll get there i could uh for example equip my pyromancy hand on my right hand and it actually changes what i use to cast the spell because it's the same as like that's like the left trigger here of the left bumper or whatever you want to call it that's the same thing as like my normal light attack. Like if I switch back to my axe and swing, it's the same thing as when I just threw that. And then there's also like the right hand heavy punch thing. But if I'm on the left side, it's, I can't wait to have just like, <laughs> very good. Hello. We're going to have to make that a, a command to use item if I just say hello. Um, so we, we do need to have like right hand um casting and left hand casting which is technically the same thing as light attack and i'm wondering if we do want to enable the ability to just say like lightning bolt lightning bolt which is really just the dream of being able to play this game with voice we got to figure out how to do it with left hand right hand and maybe in the short term that's just like hey let's just assume we're gonna cast with the left hand or the right hand um so I guess for, for those of you in chat who have played uh, Dark Souls, what do you usually use for casting? Are you usually a right-hand caster or a left-hand caster? And I guess we could just like choose one as the default but still support that. Yeah, I usually do left too just because like... Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Can we get, can we get a tiebreaker in the chat? <laughs> Sexecutioner is left hand. Carbon is a righty for casting. So the way I normally play is uh, shield in left hand. Although that's always up for debate too. Like it's it's interesting. Um, right? Oh no! Jeez. <laughs> Turtle cast easy mode. Yeah. What if we had? What if we had both sorcery and pyro? capabilities and like our uh staff was in the left hand but our pyro's in the right i mean it's like useless because you got to swap spells but um yeah <laughs> it's like technically it's possible so let's all right fine we'll assume right hand casting uh, which technically isn't the default because they defaulted left hand to assume you're just always on aggro mode and like are using both your axe and your fire like some sort of savage you can only really use one at a time so let's let's say cast spell we could set it up in a way where we have like cast left versus cast right or, or primary versus secondary 
uh, but we can also if you just say cast or whatever like defaults we have uh, we'll assume right for now so thanks other James for the uh, the tiebreaker there so um, okay we also need the ability to rotate spells so hitting up on the d-pad usually rotates if you have more than one uh, so rotate spells um, same thing with the bottom for rotating items rotate items um, the difference though is that for spells like if we have more than one we can shuffle through them for items if you have more than one and I we can equip one in our hotbar real quick so if we um, hold on I gotta I like haven't played Dark Souls in a while give me a sec um, down here in our like menu bar we've got eight options we can fill in so for, let's say like we have like these these four right yeah, that's what I was, that's exactly what I was getting to is the hold for first slot. So that we have the ability to rotate, right? So like if I I can just slap down on the D-pad over and over again and it's going to rotate. The difference though between like spell rotation and item rotation is if I hold down, it'll go to whatever's in the first position. Um, that isn't true for the original Dark Souls though. Uh, it's only true in Remastered and I don't even have Remastered on the PC. I have it on the Switch, funny enough. Um, Usually that's Estus for most people that I know that plays. They keep Estus in the first slot because that's our healing item. Uh, and you heal quite often in this game. So when you want to rotate back to top, you just hold it for about half a second. So we're going to want rotate items, and then we're going to want, like, um, run to uh, move to primary item. Okay, I feel like we've covered all of our left hand, right hand goodness uh, between what we can basically do with these four triggers we've got rotating items left right and top and bottom between items spells and uh, weapons and we also need to capture the rest of the sort of concepts that are a little more ancillary so I mean not really ancillary in this game so for example we need the ability to roll or shuffle uh, and also probably roll in certain directions which I think would be really useful uh, rather than just saying roll and wherever you're headed. Uh, so we'll have roll and then roll to direction. Because we're going to be doing a whole lot of that when we try to play. Um, we also probably want to do sprint. And even just like move forwards and backwards. Like if we want to do like strafing or, or rotating. Also watch this. Easy. Easy first parry. That's probably the best flex I'm gonna do in this entire stream. I'm gonna we'll build this like cool AI and voice enabled stuff, but the fact that I just first try parried is uh, the best flex. So let's talk about movement. We want roll and roll to direction. We want forward, back, uh, just like movement towards direction, right? Um, in direction. So also a little bit different if we. So I'm, I'm switching off of the, the keyboard and switching to mouse, or sorry, switching off the gamepad and switching to mouse and keyboard. Different mechanism for movement between WASD, which is no, sort of the traditional um, like rotation of movement for backwards, forwards, left. When we did it in Call of Duty, it was strafe. So if we said left for 10 seconds, we would just strafe left. But now it's actually like the camera actually kind of rotates with you depending on where you are. So I can control the camera with my right hand, which I don't even think we should bother with. Um, then we should, when we rotate left just by, I'm just holding the, the A key right now. We technically kind of like run in a circle to some extent. And it also depends on where the camera is. But if we just have like run left, run right, run forward or whatever, I think that'll be fine. Similarly, we also need to build in the ability to sprint. So right now this is sort of normal movement speed. If I hold B, in this case, back on my controller, I'm now sprinting. Also, sorry I missed that. Hold for slot parry for parry followed by right bumper. Oh, like do like a straight parry repost. We could try like um, that as like one full thing. Like if we just say repost, then we can literally try to do the parry mechanism and then like a certain timing in between to do the, the attack. So let's do that. Uh, repost. Rip. Is there an E at the end of that? I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, we got movement and direction. We've got sprint. Another fun one might be trying to do a sprint jump all in one command or even just jump, uh, which in this case is pressing in on the, the uh, 
analog stick while I'm running. That's how we do the jump. So we can't just like jump normally. If I, I don't know if you can hear this. I can click this in. Here's some ASMR for you. Doesn't do anything. But while I'm sprinting, I can tap it and we do sort of a jump. So maybe we can do jump and like a sprint jump all in one command. So we can do separate ones. Jump, sprint jump where we can just basically hold sprint for the minimal amount of time to enable jumping which actually isn't that long it's basically like a half second uh, and then we can jump um let's see what other movement stuff do we got we've also got uh oh wait did we already say two hand as a thing parry shield weapon set swap rates uh we'll just we'll just put make sure we have a note of this of like two hand toggle so that's just the Y key here, swaps between whether we're two-handing or one-handing. Um, let's see, what else do we what else do we have here that we need? Um, there's gonna be some things here, like pick up item is probably gonna be important. Pick up item. So let's see, if I, if I just go smash this guy. Yeah, we've, we've got pillage remains here. Um, what other menuing things do we have? Is there anything else with X? I know like A is the default for this stuff. Is there anything else? Or I don't even know if that's normally the case. Oh my god, I'm bad. Um, read message, right? So we've got pick up item, interact as like a general thing. So like read message versus like opening a door or whatever else. It's usually A. Uh, it's probably all the same command. I think what else do we have here? X is our use item. Um, let's see if I can get another parry. Oh, come on, swing, swing. No, I'm bad. That's it. We peaked. We peaked earlier. Rest at fire. Yeah. So if we run to the oh shoot, if we run to the bonfire, is it the same thing? Is it is it still just A in this case? I think it is. I think it's just like the general like interact button. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's still it's still A. So that's just like those can all be the same intent, just like use item or interact or whatever. I'm also really looking forward to to building this voice interaction. Uh, start item selecting. You might have to clarify that one for me. I'm not sure what you mean by start item selecting. You mean like in the menu? I don't even want to mess with menuing and Oh totally forgot gestures. So we got we got to have our our gestures here. We can do like we could probably do macros for like which one we do. Uh, but also there's it, what's the default gesture? Is there one? Open item menu. Yeah, so just like start menu here, right? Just to get to here. We can definitely have like open menu. Um the rest of the things like leveling and, and choosing how we spend our souls and stuff is probably better suited for just doing in the controller simply because it's going to be like a pain to try to capture all of the sort of inner mechanisms that and like I try to do it way too fast every time we're like I'm going to level up dexterity and I just run over and like slap the d-pad a thousand times um hands free open close menu would be clutch think yorm fight that's actually really true so for those of you who don't know uh, what Carbon just said. The Yorm fight, uh, shout out our OG giant boy. Um, basically, spoiler alerts, there's a different weapon you need to grab to basically beat him. If you try to beat him without it, you do, I think, like two or three damage per instead of like 16k or something. Where you have to like run in, grab a specific weapon, and then you have to like swap that in your menu real quick. So, like, to swap weapons out of what I have, I need to hit start, I need to hit. A to get into equipment and then I need to go to one of these open slots or swap an existing one so I'd hit A again and then I'd go like grab it so if I wanted to use the clerics charm let's say like this is the weapon for Yorm I'd have to go over here then slap it then get all the way out to slapping B basically over and over and and you have to do that in the middle of a fight where this guy is the potential to like one or two shot you depending on your build and your level and all that um, so definitely opening the menu could be interesting. I'm wondering how we can make that a little bit easier too. And maybe there's some macro potential. The problem is that the even worse in, in the future is like where that weapon is in your menu is going to change depending on how much you have in here. So it's not like we could say like 
swap to the to what is it called it's the storm stormbringer is the name of the weapon we can't just say like equip stormbringer because for whoever is using this and even us in the future when we get there it's going to be in a totally different spot and like right now we only have four weapons we'll storm ruler that's right we only have four weapons right now that we could choose we'll end up with probably like over a hundred by the time we get to picking up storm ruler so you gotta like find it in the right spot but at least saying like open menu or maybe we could even go a little bit further into menus to say like swap uh, or like swap uh, first weapon slot that could be really useful so we could basically macro to say like all of the things I'm gonna do here start enter enter and like get here and then you can go and grab it yeah three right two down could be interesting the problem I'm, I'm curious how useful that's going to be but maybe we should do that i mean we can do like some uh some basic menuing between like up down left right uh, i'll i'll write down here as a potential thing basic menuing uh nope not mending with d-pad which is it how do i do here it's arrow keys or i can i can't even use wasd so I literally have to arrow key it or mouse it if I'm using mouse and keyboard. I can do either. So I'm like, I'm using arrow keys right now to shuffle between them. But also here, when I'm using the controller, analog stick is still here. I have to use the D-pad to menu, which is like just super clunky. So I guess, yeah, if you said like three right, two down, I would be like one, two, three, two, two. And we, we would just automate for like hit these three things. And in the case of trying to automate the keyboard, it would be like left, left, down, down or whatever. Uh, which shouldn't be too bad and we could probably do it really quick because we can send those from our code within like nanoseconds of each other so in theory we should be able to get there pretty quick one of the things I'm concerned about with that type of automation is that if the game has uh, frame based inputs for handling those so for example we're running at, at 60 FPS locked right now if I were to send four keyboard 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 commands for like the arrow keys if I sent in this case right three right arrows two down arrows all at once and just say right after another is it going to actually pick it up or is it gonna basically just give me the last one because they all technically happen within the same frame um, because if we have 30 frames per second we basically have a frame for our 60 frames per second we've got a, uh, a single frame for a few milliseconds but if we're executing commands like that uh, they're technically happening in nanoseconds from what we're sending. So we'll see when we get there. Um, yeah, uh, okay, what else? What else do we got? Any other ideas for things that we have? So far, let me read through the list. Um, we've got light attack, heavy attack, parry, block, uh, weapon switch, swap left and right, shoot with bow, casts, spell, um, Rotate spells, rotate items, move to primary item, uh, roll, roll to a specific direction, move in a specific direction, repost, which is along with parry, uh, sprint, jump, sprint jump, two hand toggle, pick up item, interact, gestures, open menu, swap first weapon sw uh, slot, and basic menuing options with D-pad. What? <laughs> Did you just cheers 100 bits? <laughs> Thanks, James. Okay, what else What else do we got, chat? Any other mechanisms we can think of that we'd wanna automate? And then when we get into building the language model, we'll, we'll talk about like specific utterances and things we wanna shout at our virtual assistants and chatbots and all that. Get wrecked, get them out of here. I feel like we've covered most of the the movement, most of the um, combat mechanics. Tab B for backs up. Yeah, you know, I th I think that's gonna be like more in line with the roll. So I have a, I have roll and roll in direction separately. So that's like B versus like a combo of like if I'm holding the uh, forward or W and hit B versus like S and B versus A and B. Like those in theory are two different things. So one's just like B and one is like B and a combo. Um, I feel like that's pr that's pretty good. Uh, what else? I'll, I'm gonna go and just fight our first boss here while we while you all try to think of something else for us to add here too. Oh, I totally ruined that jump. That's fine. Bad, bad, bad. 
Also, how's the frame dropping for you guys on stream? I'm, I'm still easily sitting at uh, 60 FPS here, um, on my screen at least, while I have all this other software running, but is it is it coming through like super choppy for you all, or is it actually not too bad? Also, I can't wait to be able to sprint and not like claw level up Dex as a macro. Yeah, we could and, and just try to like automate the, the menuing. Tasty and smooth. <laughs> right on. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fight Gundir. Um and then we'll we'll start actually writing some code. If I can not get wrecked by Gundir. The last uh from software game I played was Sekiro, which has totally different mechanics and controls. And it's kind of messing with me. Oh no, we switched it to this. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Those cast times. How about if we're gonna do casting, we say automatically level up, um, what is it, uh, intelligence or attunement that does faster cast times? Alright, we're just gonna, we're gonna switch. Oh man. Alright, he should uh, pop, yeah. Which means we're gonna heal. And still not do it out of range, both I think. We're just getting smoked here. So maybe we won't beat Gundir before we go right code. Oh, wrecked. All right, that's a start. And hey, uh, at least it's not like the start of our Call of Duty one where the game just crashed every time. So we should even be able to debug while we're playing, which will be much, much nicer when we need to fix things instead of having to guess. Because uh, for those of you who didn't follow along, when we did this for Call of Duty, anytime we were debugging code, um, it would just crash the game. Like, I don't know what it was, like conflicts of memory or something else, but... Um, yeah, it just like just didn't work basically. Um, okay, so we've got our diagram, we've got our um, project plan, we've got a list of things we want to be able to support. We'll probably start with getting the the whole mechanism working with like a couple of them, um, and then we'll we'll do it for all of them. So uh, as I I do with all of my projects when we start, uh, we're gonna create a GitHub repository because we're gonna open source this whole thing. Uh, so all any of you who are developing and also playing Dark Souls can also uh, p uh, play along with your voice. And I'm also going to just get this scaled a little bit better for you all. Just so we don't have to, you don't have to zoom in, especially if you're watching on a phone. Okay, so let's go create a new repository. And we're going to call this our Dark Souls controller. And uh, this is a bunch of code that lets you control your character in Dark Souls 1, 2, or 3, because it should all be mostly the same mechanics, um, using your voice supports Alexa, Google Assistant, um, which I just realized this isn't muted, so we're probably gonna hear her yell at me in a sec. Uh, chat, Twitch chat, Android voice app, uh, and maybe more? Mab Mabye more? Maybe? More? We'll see how far we get. Uh, it's gonna be public, we'll initialize it. We're gonna be doing this all in .NET, and this is just generally the way I like to spin up my repositories is just by adding my, my git ignore and readme and doing it from GitHub first. Other people like to just sort of start writing code and then push it up. Uh, Alexa, I'm not having fun. We'll just have it as a macro to like go quit out real quick. <laughs> Closest Dark Souls 2 and opens DS3. Oh no. The whole thing's not gonna work. They like they changed the uh they changed like a bunch of the weird mechanics, didn't they, between those? Like the jump buttons were different. And like we maybe not all of this is gonna work on all three, and this is just kind of a lie. Here, let's do this. Let you control your characters in Dark Souls 1, 2, kinda LOL, or 3 using your voice. Get good is going to be the, the voice command we'll use for the combo of parry and repost. 
Also, GitHub's new UI, which is like a bunch of rounded corners, still definitely throws me off. Uh, okay, we're gonna open and GitHub Desktop and clone this thing. This is that to Project Dark Souls controller. Not sure why I didn't why it's doing it from URL, but sure. Um, and so basically, all of the same stuff that we did for our Warzone controller, we should be able to reuse. And like I said, the difference is just the commands and what they're actually executing. So what I have up right now is uh, our Dar our Warzone controller, um, and that includes both all the C# -sharp code, including the Twitch bot, uh, as well as the Arduino code. So this is like where we add the command if we get the reload string sent over serial to call reload, and then when we go to reload, we send we have the, we have our own method here called send basic key command for R. If we go down to that, our send basic key command is somewhere so basic key command just says like hey start the keyboard transaction this is what tells the operating system that we're a keyboard this is what presses the key and then we release it because you actually have to handle like the actual press and release of it now we can also mock gamepad usb components here but i haven't done it and i think we'll just probably stick to the keyboard stuff uh but basically press and release so also up here for example where we have like backwards we have sort of the same mechanism where we have like s um, but we also delay it by a certain amount before we, we release it. So we're going to be making use of that for things like um, both combining keys, so hot keying, like we've been saying so far, uh, or macroing rather. I guess kind of both. The whole thing is basically a voice powered hot key machine. Um, but for macroing, where we're actually going to press a few different buttons and do press and releases in certain order. Um, and we're also going to want to do timing. So if we have like move forward for two seconds, we, we want to do like sort of the same thing here where we like hold down W for a certain amount of time and then release it. And if we don't have a value, then we can set a default. So all the same stuff is here. So for the server side, what we have is an API and we've got controllers here for like Alexa and dialogue flow. And then we have just the sort of raw just send command one, which is how we were able to hit it from our Android app and from Twitch or we just send the command name and we pass that down over the hub with no arguments. Um, so we'll probably do the same thing there. And then uh, for these, it's the same thing, except the only difference is these intents that we process from the Alexa language model will be different. So instead of having you know the armor intent or reload, we'll end up having things like block or roll or whatever. But even some of these will be similar, like attack in this case was shooting, uh, but it'll be the same thing, we'll put do like a light attack. So I think we're gonna end up having a larger list here. Just looking at like the comparison of what I have on my phone to this list, like we're looking at probably like twice as many, but it's mostly just busy work to get it set up. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just create a new project and um, let's start with ASP.NET Core Web App. Actually, I'm gonna start with an empty solution, sort of my, my go-to blank solution. Uh, we're going to call this the uh, Dark Souls, Dark Souls controller. And we don't save things here. We save them in project slash Dark Souls controller slash source. And hopefully I did that in the right spot. Also, miss me with these ads, Steam. Okay, so cool. We have our, our just our empty solution. I'm just going to throw that up onto get. Excuse me. Empty solution. Cool. That's awesome. Let's see if we can do it from Team Explorer. Hello? <laughs> Maybe it technically didn't save. Okay. Whatever. We'll get to that later. Quit out could also be good. Streamers love it. Yo, rage quit would be hilarious. The problem is when when you know people come over and play here and and we want to do like rotations <laughs> having someone just yell rage quit and have it exit out of the game would be brutal we could just literally make it alt f4 not even doing oh no 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 you're saying quit out like exit to menu if you're falling oh that's actually genius i thought you were talking about rage quitting hold on um quit quit that's what we'll call it yeah 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 oh that's huge I, I got really good at that in Dark Souls 1, doing like the like super fast, it's like 
start left on the d-pad a up on the d-pad a to do like the hot swap to quit menu we could totally hotkey that it is different on all three games though so ds1 2 and 3 have different menus for getting to quit uh so it's definitely going to be a little challenging um to do it on all three but we'll we'll play on dark souls 3 for this one and then we can always like you know set it up to do different things depending on what game i want to play All right, in our empty solution, let's start with our uh, web app. So we're going to create an ASP.NET Core web application. We'll say this is our Dark Souls controller dot API. And we'll do the, the API template, although we really don't need it. Um, and we need to go add like our NuGet packages. So we need to add the Alexa.NET NuGet package. That way we can handle Alexa requests, give me that. Yes. Although I do think rage quit would be funny too. Just a quick command for Alt F4. I feel like I could use that at work too. So like my code's not working, rage quit. Alexa rage quit and it's just done. All right, we don't need this weather forecast nonsense that it decides to start us up with. Um, cool, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna literally open Warzone controller and just shamelessly copy and paste this. So for, for those of you who are watching this later, like on YouTube or, or Twitch um, on my highlights and stuff, um, the source code's all gonna be up so you can view it. But basically, we're just gonna not waste time getting like the Alexa controller set up that way we can just do all the default stuff. Um, so we're gonna need to create a hub, that way we can send commands down. Um, and then we're gonna have a single endpoint for handling the skill request, um, choosing what it is and, and then sending something back down. So I'm literally going to just copy this entire class uh, over to our new Dark Souls one. So we'll create a new controller Oh, last time we did that, it took forever. New class, because we know our base classes, uh, called Alexa Controller. For those of you new to ASP.NET Core development, these are defining the URL endpoints that we're going to actually be sending requests to. Uh, so that means when we, oh, why do I have to? We want MVC. Um, that means when we send a request to our URL that we're running this server on slash API slash controller, which in this case will be Alexa slash handle request. That's where we get to send all of this good stuff. So uh, that's what Alexa expects for us to be able to send. Um, and so we need to be able to support that as well. So I'm gonna get rid of all this setting stuff because we don't really care about it. And now I'm just bringing in all the namespaces of all the Alexa.net SDK stuff we have. Um, we can, we can basically just get rid of this validate request. I don't think we're ever gonna publish this at this point. We tried to do that with Warzone Controller and they gave us so much grief, right? So at this point, if I if I publish this and I get rid of like the you know Warzone hub stuff, we actually can handle the requests from uh, our Warzone Controller. Like all I have to do is just publish this to Azure or something. Um, so the only thing left to do here is to create our other hub hubs I should have called it uh, for Dark Souls so we'll change it from Warzone hub and we'll create a new hub called Dark Souls hub and we'll probably even just copy the one from there too but we don't really need it uh, Dark Souls hub and this is a class that inherits from hub so now in our Alexa controller instead of trying to get a reference to Warzone hub we get a reference to our Dark Souls hub and as long as we have this registered, we'll call this, let's just call it hub, hub. Uh, we can send stuff down to it. So to sort of break down what's happening here, the signal R allows us to send requests over WebSockets or long polling if, if we don't support uh, WebSockets on the server, which we probably won't because we're gonna host it for free, uh, which means that any client that wants to connect to it in terms of the abstraction level, connects to this hub, 
and you they can now send stuff up to the hub which we don't really have to worry about in this scenario that would be like if we wanted the uh, like leonardo to send stuff back up and we wanted our server to handle it which we don't really need um so all of these scenarios down here where we just return our okay response before we do that we say to that hub hey every cl every client right because we have all of them every end client that's connected to you send this information down um and basically we are only going to have one client connected at a time which is why we don't really care when we start to get into like scaling uh, this whole solution for like our broader use we're gonna end up wanting to send it to just a specific client so for example I, if I'm Alex and I'm on my you know suave keyboard or whatever we end up calling it uh, and I have this connected and I'm running my app here we only want to send the commands that I say to my Alexa device or any of my devices to only this one we don't want to send it to all of them because that like if that happens if I say like Alexa, tell Suave Keyboard to type hello world. It's actually going to type it on everyone's device that's still connected. So we want to make sure that it's connected to a single place. And there, we'll get into those complicated scenarios when we get to actually building that experience out. Um, but basically, instead of saying all, we need to specify by like user. And then we can like pass in the user ID that we've registered. And it's a whole thing. But for now, we're sending it to all because I'm the only one running this thing. This does mean, though, that if you want to run your own Dark Souls controller, play Dark Souls yourself, I can shout at my Alexa and have your character move. And that is sort of one of the goals we had with being able to let you all shout at your Alexas to move mine too. Uh, but instead, I thought Twitch chat was funnier. And it turns out it definitely was. It was way cooler to have you all in Twitch chat on Call of Duty telling me to throw grenades and it made me throw grenades when I didn't want to. Hence, grenade out. Um, okay, so basically we'll, we're going to get rid of like all of these that don't make sense. I do, like we have move forward, back left, right. That's still fine. Just making sure there's no other ones here. We do have switch weapons, which is kind of appropriate, but we'll get rid of these. And then these ones are all the built-in ones. Um, so some things we're going to want to change. Our launch request is what happens if you just say open instead of trying to do what's called a one shot. So if I say, in this case, we're going to call it just Dark Souls. So if I say open Dark Souls, we're going to want to say like, welcome to the Dark Souls controller. Issue a command like uh, roll or um, let's say like fireball. <laughs> that would be pretty hilarious. Okay. So if I just say open Dark Souls, that's what we're going to end up hearing back from Alexa once we deploy it. Um, and then for like moving forwards, backwards, left and right, uh, that's all fine. Prepare to die. Yeah. Actually, that's I like that. Prepare to die. Except that uh, the remaster doesn't say prepare to die anymore in the title. It's just Dark Souls remastered. Also, Demon Souls is getting a new release uh, only on PlayStation. I think. Can we like talk about that for a sec? Because this would be amazing if I could actually use it on new Demon Souls, but I think it's only coming to um, PS5, right? It's and it's not even like a it's not even just like a regular remaster. They like rebuilt a lot of it. Um, sorry, we're gonna we're gonna take a tangent here. Is it only coming to um, PS5? Does anyone know in chat? No. <laughs> Oh, this is a year ago. Damn, that means we're not going to be able to do this for Demon Souls. That would be awesome, though. Maybe, we'll, I mean, I do have some stuff in the hopper for being able to do this with uh, all on device Bloodborne and Demon Souls on PC. Yeah, I, I, I still haven't played Bloodborne. I don't have a PlayStation, um, so I've only ever played Souls and... Uh, Sekiro, so Sekiro, Sekiro, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I, I don't even know what it's like to experience that. Borrow mine, quarantine goals. Yo, bring it over, James. <laughs> bring me your PlayStation. We'll, we'll play it on the projector in, in our, our little theater room here. Okay, so here's what we'll do. I'm just kind of winging it at this point. Let's publish this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, it's gonna take some time to spin up an app service, but we're gonna create a new app service. I wanna see if we can get Dark Souls that Azure uh, websites.net. We'll see.
Come on, load those subscriptions. I'm pretty sure I only have one. There it is. All right, so instead, we're just gonna say, uh, "Dark Souls, please be allowed." Uh, we're gonna host this on our Swab Streams resources, and the hosting plan is gonna be. Uh, do I not have one for free? We're, we're gonna we're gonna create a new one that way. I don't, I don't have to pay anything for this free. Dark Souls plan. I love it. Um, and I'm not gonna turn on. Actually, yeah. Screw it. We're gonna do application insights. I want to see uh, how many people end up using this. Okay, we're gonna find out if we can get Dark Souls that Azure uh, websites .net because that would be sick. If not, we'll have to call like Dark Souls voice controller or something. So this is gonna take a step, a, a second to deploy. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring another tab over here. I'm gonna sign into the uh, Alexa developer console with all of our Alexa skills that we've built so far on stream, if I can remember my password ever and my fingers work with me. Right. Right. So here's all the stuff we've built before. We've got Find My Rep, that's published. We've got Suave Pirate Updates, that's published. And we've got our Warzone Controller, but we're gonna create a new skill called Dark Souls. Uh, and we're gonna do it all custom, but uh, I've gone over this a few times on stream before, but basically the model that they say for your skill the overuse of the term model when it comes to language and voice stuff but basically custom allows us to handle any voice interaction flash briefings happens when you say what's new you'll notice all of these are all like specific structures that you have uh, we want custom and we definitely do not want to host this on alexa we want to host this ourselves in our happy little website and so we can create uh this new one and we want empty why why would I want one of these templates? Just give me nothing. Please don't give me any intents here. Okay, let's check in on this. We did get Dark Souls Azure websites.net. Oh my goodness. We're kind of multitasking here, but um, all right, so we've got our interaction model and in our intents, it did give us a pre-built one just to make me delete it. And I can't even delete it yet because it's still building. Ugh. Okay, that's fine. Let's do this. Uh, in our Dark Souls controller, there's still some more stuff we need to get this working. On startup, we need to configure our hub. That way we know the route to hit, we know how to connect to it, and everything else. So if we go look at what we did on Warzone controller in that startup, we'll find a few different things. Oh, that actually reminds me. Another um, NuGet package I want to add is Handy Dandy Swashbuckle. So uh, for those of you who haven't used swashbuckle before especially for those of you that i know who are in chat who haven't built apis before uh, swashbuckle gives us the swagger ui and configuration very easily when we're using c sharp or, or really anything.net um, to view and and test it, our our api so we can just like hop into this web page and it has it all pre-configured yeah got him james I know there's a few other people in here that are just here because it says dark souls even though we're, we're out here writing code to play Dark Souls. We should probably also play offline. <laughs> Reminds me that way. We don't get caught for cheating. I mean, technically it's not cheating. It is a USB keyboard. And I wonder how anti-cheats would get around that. I know some anti-cheats like will keep an eye on like the amount of requests that come in like per frame. And like if it's inhuman, which we most certainly can do with this, it, it might get flagged. Uh, which, in the case of Dark Souls, we're not going to try to go play PvP or anything, but we certainly could um, we'll see we haven't we haven't been kicked out from Call of Duty and I've actually been talking to some folks at Activision about what we've been doing to, to do something more official but that's besides the point getting a little ahead of myself uh, for Dark Souls we should be fine but anyway this swashbuckle uh, what an appropriate name too, coming from Suave Pirate so um, there's some things here in startup that basically just tell our our server the the types of things that we want to be configured for so when we add controllers this is going to allow us to handle dependency injection as a mechanism for our controller here so for example we're passing in to our Alexa controller here an iHub context in order to be able to do this and have this actually initialize and have this be a thing we have to add controllers for it to be able to handle the routes and handle the dependency injection now similarly for hubs we have to say add signal R which is what we just did 
There's a couple other things here we can do too to get swashbuckle to work, which is where we add swagger generation. Now swagger generation, or swagger gen if you will, once we bring in all this stuff, and this is no longer my API, this is the Dark Souls voice API. Um, this is going to basically say, hey, for each of the controllers we have, for the API ones anyway, generate swagger documentation. And swagger is just the spec that uh, was built by SmartBear uh, to basically encapsulate everything we know about an API. So we can tell it in a data structure, this route, this slash API, slash Alexa, slash handle request, takes an HTTP post, it's going to consume a skill request object, and it's going to return an action result. Uh, in this case, we could even have it return explicitly a skill response, and, and that way we know exactly what needs to be sent to it and what can be sent back and how to talk to it. Now, with that Swagger doc generation in our startup now, we can actually use it to generate that UI, and so that's what's down here where we've got this use Swagger and use Swagger UI. So uh, Swagger Gen is the spec. Swagger UI is what gives us the, the actual user interface um, for being able to try this stuff out. So I'm going to replace those names there. There's one other thing we did last time that helped us with the Alexa issues just before we, we run into it, and that's instead of just adding controllers, we want to add MVC with Newtonsoft JSON. So the reason for this is that the models we have, and we need to explicitly add Newtonsoft JSON. Um, the models we have for Alexa when we send them up and down require that we're actually using JSON.net or Newtonsoft's JSON, uh, James Newton King's beautiful library that's been out for a while, uh, because it, it actually has a dependency on it. And if we try to use the new baked in uh, ASP.NET Core 3.0 or greater libraries for JSON.net, also brought to you by James Newton King and his team and uh, many other wonderful people at Microsoft. Um, it doesn't support it and it runs into issues by trying to like deserialize interfaces because it does a whole bunch of like weird stuff that I, I don't even want to get into with you know everything's an interface but it gets injected as an actual value and, and all that stuff uh, so what I want to do is just make sure I get the right package and it's this one Microsoft at ASP.NET Core MVC dot Newtonsoft JSON and we need that in our new Dark Souls controller project so Microsoft oh look at that I've looked it up before Right, so we want to add this, and it needs to match the version of our other packages. So specifically, our ASP.NET stuff, uh, ASP.NET Core stuff. Uh, so if we go to Microsoft, if we go back to it because I lost it, uh, we need to install basically the latest in 3.0, which will be 3.03, because I still don't think I have 3.1 enabled on here. I, oh yeah, so now we have, you can even see that error just went away from us installing the package. So now over in startup, this is good, no red squiggles, uh, we're good to go. So when we run this, I think I've got everything covered. We've got our signal R, we've got our controllers, we've got the stuff that, to enable Alexa, we've got Swagger, we've got the Swagger UI. When I run this project locally on my local host, we'll see what wonderful port it gives us. Which actually would be funny if we set up like a local port that makes more sense. Uh, all right, so we got localhost 44377. It's defaulting to weather forecast as the route because they gave us some stuff for that before. But if we go to slash swagger, we get a UI for how everything works that we have set up in controller. So we can actually test sending data in the structure that Alexa is going to send uh, over to this API. So now that we've made these changes, I'm going to stop debugging. We're going to redeploy this to our, our Azure websites. And now in this build side on the Alexa things, we can finally hopefully get rid of this stupid built-in intent. Why isn't it letting me get rid of this? Let me delete you. Maybe I need to refresh. They only just started doing this like collapsed version of things. There's normally like a nice little delete icon over here why I don't want I don't want you hello world intent you are very much a waste of my time am I missing something is anyone else anyone in chat see anything here that says like just get this out of my face either way we can go to the JSON editor and just get rid of this goodbye hello world intent we don't need you around here 
Okay, so uh, we can go to endpoint, and yeah, we need utterances for things, and I don't care. And instead of using uh, Lambda, we're going to want to use HTTPS, because that's the route that we took by hosting this in Azure. Uh, so we have our darksouls.azurewebsites.net. This is our URL for our server. So now that this is deployed, if I go to Swagger here, I can even post this in chat. You all can click on this. That is a public website that we now have. And this is what we're going to want to be using for our Alexa controller. So we want to have Alexa send all of its requests to HTTPS darksouls.azurewebsites.net slash API slash Alexa slash handle request. So we set that in here. So we have API, Alexa, handle request. And our SSL type is, it's owned by Microsoft and it's a subdomain. So we're saving it. So we don't have any of our custom intents yet, and that's fine, we'll get there. Uh, but let's make sure that we can at least open it and hit our launch intent. So to do that, I can go over to test, switch to development, and now if I say open Dark Souls, we should hit it. Did you? Let me make sure the invocation name actually carried over too. So this is what's called um, change me. Oh my god, Amazon, please. Okay, we're calling this Dark Souls. We're saving it and building it. Um, anyway, so when we're building Alexa skills, this invocation is used for uh, what's called explicit invocation, uh, which is where we say open and what our invocation name is. So when we say open Dark Souls, Alexa is going to process that and send a launch request to our, our endpoint. So it's going to send a bunch of data with the launch request to our endpoint, which is going through API Alexa handle request, which means it'll go through over here to handle request and we'll get that launch request and then we respond with this. So hopefully when we say open Dark Souls, we should hear back from Alexa, welcome to the Dark Souls controller, issue a command like roll or fireball, prepare to die. Uh, and that's what we're just trying to get. But for some reason, it doesn't like that we're missing sample utterances. Um, that's probably just because we have no custom intents. So let's just put in one of the ones we have here. We'll say, um, grab one of the ones we've got that's actually set up, move forward intent. So we go back over here, say move forward, and we'll say forward as a single utterance for now. We'll, we'll grow this out a bit. Uh, so now let's see if we can build build started well now it's taken a while because it it does that so essentially what we're gonna do is go add intents in here with utterances for all of the the different commands that we captured earlier so all of the different things we want to do that I've got this massive list of on my phone we're going to create unique intents for and unique ways of, of things we're going to say to actually have that happen. Um, and then we'll be able to then handle all of those differently in our code and, and route it through the full process. But let's test this connection first before we get too far. So now when I say open Dark Souls, we should get our response. And it's still giving me grief. Open Dark Souls. to build invocation is dark souls let's try dark souls controller that might be too generic uh, cool thing is too when we just turned on testing over here when we switch it from off to development not only does it let me use the simulator here for it it also lets me use any Alexa device that's connected to the same account I'm signed in on which includes all of the Alexa devices I have over here, which I think is actually only two Alexa ones. I've got some more upstairs and around the house. Uh, we've also got some Google ones here. We've got a HomePod and even a Cortana device. But uh, So now we've got Open Dark Souls Controller. Hopefully this works. Why? Oh, now it just finished the build. I might need to like turn off and on testing or something. And we'll even refresh. Open Dark Souls controller. 
There we go. All right, so now that we've got our full build, we see welcome to Dark Souls controller, issue a command like roll fireball, prepare to die. Now I'm gonna unmute the one back here, turn it up a little bit so you all can hear it through the microphone. Apologies if it sounds like crap. Alexa, open Dark Souls controller. Welcome to the Dark Souls controller. Yeah. Issue a command like roll or fireball. Prepare to die. Prepare to die. All Listen. right. So <laughs> it actually just picked up the moving forward one. Okay, so we've got our connection, which means that now it's it's much easier for us to actually get this code going. Um, so now all we need to do is add some intents here. So let, let me pull up my handy dandy list of many things, and we'll start with a few. Let's start with some of the basic mechanics, and then we can get into the things that are a little more complex, require like macros or multi steps. Uh, but let's create some here under intents. So the first first things first, rest in peace, Uncle Phil. Uh, we've got light attack intent, light attack, light attach, light attack intent. Um, so these are all going to be the light attack right bumper sort of mechanisms. So let's let's think through a couple different ways that we we might want to say something that we want to cast, uh, or hit, or swing, or whatever. Right. So we've got attack, swing. Um, in this case, we want to have shoot. For using the bow this we also all agreed earlier right hand for spells so this would also be our primary mechanism for casting so we say fireball lightning bolt uh, maybe we could assume left hand for miracles poke if a thrust weapon <laughs> I love it poke <laughs> um, what do we got swing shoot fireball let's say show all so it doesn't lose them on me come on show all Attack, swing, shoot, fireball, lightning, bolt, poke. Uh, pew, pew, that was a promise. Uh, just a single pew I think we'll do as well. Um, is there another way to spell pew that it might pick up? I wonder. Like, Is it the same spelling for like a pew in like a, a church or whatever? I, I, I'm so dumb. I don't know. Lightning, ball, fireball. Let me just say fire. Um, what are some other major spells that we could like say by name that we'd want to cast both from um pyromancy and from but yeah, so so james what i was thinking with heels is do we want to assume heels are going to be right-handed as well if not we can make heels be the left-handed one i'm curious i don't know I tend left. Yeah, I usually do too. When I when, whenever I do play with miracles, I usually have like melee in the right hand and heals on the left swapped for shield. Yeah, okay. So we'll let's stick to just pyromancy and sorcery in the right hand and light attack there. Yeah, exactly. And that way we could also support like sorcery or pyro and miracles together without having like weird combos of things. Um, so for this is light attack intent is all right hand uh, Let's actually explicitly call this right light attack intent. So anything that is essentially the right bumper uh, Is what we want to capture here both melee and spells um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Can you say melee uh, What other what are what are the names of some other spells? That I'm not thinking of that we would want to actually like yell out to cast um, so we got fireball. We've got the like little trailing one. We've got like the one that throws the orbs above you. It's like orb up, <laughs> orbs, orb please. <laughs> please shoot. <laughs> please attack the attach the enemy. Die, 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 die. Iron skin. Iron skin's gonna be left heavy, isn't it? Isn't that the oh no, that's the cast. Slash, yeah. Slash um thrust for thrust weapons too. Where is my super suit? That's what you want for your right attack phrase, or is that just a general question, or are you just flexing that you can remember the Incredibles quotes? Iron skin. That's the what what spelt i thought that was a miracle is that a sorcery where's my super suit for oh my gosh is is iron skin uh what type of spell is that it's pyro 
Okay, fine. Where where's my super suit? We do need to also capture where is my super suit because Alexa's not usually good enough to handle that. Let's also just say pyro and sorcery as just a thing. So if whatever our, our right hand is, if we just say pyro and we don't really care. Um, iron skin. Skin up. <laughs> Get thick. I like these. Spell oh yes, <laughs> spell the most obvious. Cast spell cast <laughs> we, we got where's my super suit before we got cast that makes sense all right i feel like that's probably enough for now all right let's do uh do magic okay fine do magic and we'll say do the magic stuff actually we probably even <laughs> just have magic okay okay those are good let's make another new intent uh we're gonna want um what do we call this one? Right light attack? We're gonna want, actually we probably shouldn't even call this necessarily attack. We're gonna want just right light intent. And then we're gonna wanna have a left light intent. <laughs> Smack. Smack him. Squish. It's another good one if we got a big old hammer. Okay left light intent so this is normally shield but it would only be on the light side bop it <laughs> i feel like one of the things i want to be able to do is just like the quick little like shield shuffle with left light so we'll, we'll, the first thing i'm going to add is uh shield shuffle uh flip shield this is if we have uh two hands we're going to do left light attack and this is also for casting miracles in, in terms of our build specifically, our very opinionated build for this uh, voice app. Left light tag will say he, oh yeah, turtle. I, I kind of want to do a different intent for like when you want to hold it versus like this is like if you were to just tap the button versus holding the button. In my head, they're, they're meant for very different things uh, mechanically in the game. So this would be like more like the casting or the the weird pre-dual flex of slap slapping your shield around um let's see miracles i i want to say like heal but like we also don't we have heals for estus i'd rather have that this should be lightning bolt though lightning because those are all miracles right light lighting lighting sure buff um oh yeah buff buff weapon I keep thinking of like when I'm, when you say buff, like my head goes to like the weapon art buff, like the big flex one or whatever. Uh, buff weapon, buff lightning, go home. Although that's kind of also like homeward bone, but also if you have the uh, that homeward spell, that would be a good one. I think that's a miracle. What other miracles do we have that are? Uh, we still didn't even get lightning. We said lighting bolt, <laughs> lightning, lightning bolt bolt shocker pikachu pika pikachu be a good one um what other things do you do with miracles or your left hand left swing wrath of the gods and project force can't oh yeah i always forget about those say force push uh we can say i am the senate that's a good one. Um, push. We could say uh, feel my wrath, and also wrath of the gods. Okay, I feel like that's probably plenty of for left. Um, let's do heavy attack. So that'll be right heavy intent. So this would be like heavy attack, big boy swing. Um, That's probably fine enough for now, I think, for these. Yeet. <laughs> okay, yeah, left left light definitely has to be, it definitely needs the yeet. Uh, right heavy is also definitely getting thwomp. I don't know what Alexa's gonna interpret thwomp as, but it's going in. Um, big bop, be good. Big swing. These are beautiful, bonk. Is bonk more of a light attack with a club or is it more of a heavy attack? I just don't know. Okay, let's do uh, left heavy, and then we'll get into some of the movement stuff. Bonk is too light. Yeah, it feels like a light club. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and move right light. We're gonna add bonk. 
We'll also say boop. I feel like that's another good one there. Okay, anyway, new intent. We'll do left heavy. Left heavy intent. Uh, so this will be like weapon art. Uh, art. What other, what other stuff can you do? Oh, parry. Oh my gosh, right? Parry. Um, what, what else is just the left trigger? Weapon art and parry. Get good. And also get good. Um, what else? Help, help me out here, chat. Left, left trigger. What else do you do with that? I feel like I, I feel like I only do it for weapon art when I'm two handing and parrying when I'm feeling confident. Um, parry. We'll say parry the platypus. Is that how you spell platypus? I feel like that's fine for now. All right, let's do rolling. That's going to be essential. Uh, roll intent. This is going to be just the normal roll, not the roll in a direction. Uh, so we roll, shuffle, truffle shuffle, um, roly poly. I feel like is going to be a key phrase to capture here. Um, what if we just have like no, 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 no as one? Do a barrel roll. I love it. Wait, we have utterance conflicts? What do we have for conflicts? Oh, let me save this. What did, where did they move this to? They used to have utterance conflicts in a much more obvious place. All right, here. Go home. Navigate home intent? Come on. Oh, no, we have lighting bolt in both. Yeah, we definitely want to get rid of that from right light. We don't we don't want lightning bolts over there because lightning bolts a miracle, and we're we're not miracle in the right hand kind of people. Never mind saying lightning bolt like a moron, uh, because I don't know how to spell lightning. Okay, we'll save that and then for we'll get rid of the go home one too since apparently that's a built-in feature of Alexa that we can't override just for our shameless uh, Dark Souls needs. Where did it go? I thought, isn't it this one? Isn't it left? Oh, that's right light. We want left light. Left light. Where's go home? Go home. Can I search? I'm just doing the browser, I guess. Go home. Goodbye. No more conflicts. Midlist. Yeah, I, I, I got it. I don't know how bad the delay is on chat. Okay, so we got... All of the attack stuff, we got left, right. Let's do uh, use item. So that'll be like our, our heal and stuff like that. So we'll say item intent. We'll say heal, Estus, use item, homeward bone, um, drank, yep. <laughs> Revive me. <laughs> Save me, please. Oh dear God, help! Um, let's see, what else do we want? Heal, heal, heal! It's gonna be an essential thing to say. Uh, chug. Pour one out. Um, drown me in that Estus. I think we got heal as the first one. Interesting thing with help, that's a built-in intent that's supposed to be there for when people need help understanding what to do. So we actually have, we have a conflict there. Pour some sugar on me, I'll allow it. Some sugar on me. We'll also be the explicit pour some Estus on me. Um, that's probably a good list. Oh, oh yeah, the rest of the items we need to use too. Um, what else can we do with items? We can use a soul. We can, um, I feel like I only heal. Pour some sugar, oh, one me, good call. Pour some sugar on me. And we probably want to handle when Alexa is dumb and does pour some sugar on me. Let's see. Um, what other items do we often use? 
I feel like it's basically only Estus for me when I'm actually doing anything. Um, do we add like item, use item, just for all the normie stuff? Item, please. Did I, I thought I got Homeward Bone. Yeah, I got Homeward Bone. All right, well, we can say that. We can always add to these later. It's not like a one-way thing too. Okay, so we've got attacking, we've got rolling. Um, we've got using items. Let's do swap weapons for left and right. We'll do swap left. Yeet does handle most, oh my gosh, fireball and stuff like, oh, but we have Yeet on the left side. Okay, so here's a question for chat. Do we wanna have Yeet be like throwing a firebomb or a throwing knife? Which you could say like firebomb fire bomb uh knife throw um do we want yeet here or do we want yeet with the assumption we're gonna use miracles and use force push i'll leave it up to you all right now it's on the force push one but we can always change it um i'm gonna go and move on to um swap left weapon intent so swap left, um, switch left, switch shield. I eat my items, not my spells. Yeah, Carbon, it's, I agree, I eat my items. I also don't use miracles that often, but it is nice to yeet someone. You're not necessarily yeeting the item, but you are gonna yeet someone off a cliff if you're using force push. I'm kind of more in favor of using it for items, though. Um, I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn. We'll, we'll, we maybe maybe we leave it here. We'll get in the game and we'll feel it out. If I if I switch to fire bombs and I have the urge to say yeet, then maybe we'll switch it to to working with the uh, the right the using item instead of left hand. Um, okay, switch shield, switch left, swap left. Um, that's that's probably fine for that. And we'll just do the same thing for right. Um, I'm actually gonna even just shorthand or shortcut this and do it in the JSON editor. So we'll just copy this, swap right, and uh, say right, swap right, switch right, switch weapon. I think that's fine. Um, okay. So before we go on anymore, I need to go get some more water um, and then we're going to actually get all these set up on the API side. We'll get our client side running and we, I mean, we should be able to get this like up and running with these intents within like 20 minutes or so and actually have it start working with like running this stuff. We basically just got to take all the same thing we did on our Arduino stuff um, here and just like literally switch the up here at the top, the names of the commands and what they are other challenge is going to be that I have to go I, have to, I gotta go into Dark Souls and figure out like what the keyboard command is for half this stuff because I want to be able to use my controller to move it but I also like I don't I don't remember what the keyboard command is for roll so we'll have to figure that out and then we'll we'll have it press the right keys and stuff but um, I'm gonna be right back I just need you know two minutes to go get some water and stuff and we'll just carry on right after that
Okay, we are back and we are hopefully done training our model. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so um, what I wanna do is run through a few more sort of steps just to validate everything is sort of set up right before we just send it and build everything. Um, so what I wanna do is add some gross switch statements for each one of these other intents. Cause so far we, we don't have any intents with any actual data in them. Um, also, I like his shirt very, thanks James. It's, it's my favorite little flower shirt. Um, and I do have many flower shirts. This is explicitly my favorite one. Um, anyway, set up to make sure we hit these. We don't have any with slots or anything complicated yet. I think we, we are gonna get there. And there's almost like two different levels of complicated that we didn't capture in the war zone controller that I wanna capture here. So like these ones are pretty straightforward other than the move forward intent uh, where we do a little bit of a custom thing. But basically like each one of these intents that we set up is really just like a mapping to a single button or a single key. So they're very straightforward. Um, what, I, what are gonna get a little more complicated are things that need timers or values. So if we have like, uh, when we get into like the menuing intent, if we say like move down three and right two, right? Like we need to know the right number and the left number and then do things based off that. And also like the timing ones, if we say uh, block for three seconds, then that's gonna be very different than like just tapping the block button. Um, so we need to handle those differently. And then just the regular macro ones for chain. There's really like sort of three different levels of complicated here. And then our, our fourth, which is the baby one that we're gonna finish setting up. So uh, to validate all this stuff is working, what I'm gonna do first is actually just add these cases here for these other intents and make sure that we return the response that we're expecting. So um, I'm, I'm gonna just side by side these so we can just shamelessly copy them. Um, and let's just go one by one. So we've got right light. So we've got that and we'll return okay for response builder dot tell. Um, we'll say light attack. And that's what we wanna send back. And then we'll do right heavy, uh, left light and left heavy. So we've got right heavy and we've got heavy attack, we've got left light, and for that we'll say um, left light attack, I guess, whatever, and then we've got uh, left heavy, and that'll be left heavy attack. Um, all right, we've got move forwards there because we have all the movement stuff, even if we don't have them all yet. Right light, left light, right heavy, left heavy, roll. Roll intent. And our response will be rolling. Uh, we've got item intent, item intent. And we'll say using item, hopefully it uh, isn't Estes. I wonder, I wonder how Alexa is gonna pronounce S this too. Um, okay, we've got item intent and we've got swap left and swap right. So we're just gonna put these in here, copy and paste them over. Um, we'll say swapping left and swapping right. Uh, okay, so all we need to do is publish this. This is already built. So the cool thing is every time we build our model, uh, save and build it, it's immediately available in our test version. So without even touching anything else, now that our new version of our API is out, once this little loader's done, I can just try it over here with the one-shot invocation to say something like, Alexa, tell Dark Souls, blah, 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 blah. never mind, I don't know how to this talk. This might answer your question. It is light in Boston. The sun will set at 8.24 p.m. It is kind of light out here. Uh, and thanks for doxing me, Alexa. Tell Dark Souls controller to roll. Rolling. There we go. It said rolling. All right, let's try. Um, Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to swap left weapon. Left light attack. Ooh. We got left light attack. So when we said swap left weapon, so that's interesting. We, d we should add that swap left weapon just because I didn't even think of that. 
and switch left weapon. Uh, and we should probably do the same thing for right. Swap right weapon, switch right weapon. Okay, save and build. But we can say, Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller, Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to switch right. Swapping right. There you go. Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to use item. Use an item. All right, Hopefully so we... it isn't Estus. <laughs> she did pronounce Estus right. Look at that. Um, cool. So we've got everything matched up right. Uh, so now we should just go through the process of getting like all of these ones working all the way through. So basically, there's there's two more steps. We need to deploy the app that's going to run on Windows that is going to connect to our SignalR hub over WebSocket. So that way, when we say send. We'll say in our desktop app once we get it, after Alexis processed it and everything else, that we'll get the intent, we'll do something, and then we'll, we'll handle the Arduino code from there as well. Um, so, let's go build our UWP app. So I'm going to create a new project, and we'll full screen this because we don't really need the Alexa stuff now. And we'll remute her just because she likes to listen when I'm saying her name. Uh, we'll say add, new project, and so this time we're going to create a U universal Windows blank app project. We're going to call this Dark Souls controller.client. And whatever that version is is fine. So once we get this set up, um, where I'm just going to shamelessly again copy and paste my uh, main page here from what we have for Warzone controller. Um, then we should be good to go uh, with setting up the Arduino. And then once we have the Arduino set up, we'll go into game and we'll try it. And then I'll also get the Twitch bot set up too, so you all can actually start to play uh, as well. So uh, I'm going to just, I'm over here in the file explorer on the side, just because I want to actually copy some of these files over too. Um, 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 client, so we want our things over here. Again, shamelessly copied. Give me one sec. You'll see it probably pop up on the Dark Souls controller client in just a sec. And oh yeah, replace those files. All right. Now in here, we want to do a find and replace <laughs> for everything that is Warzone, and we want to replace it with Dark Souls. Yeah, replace it all. Cool. All right, I'm going to see if I can commit this. So uh, initial API and client. All right, so now it should all be up on GitHub too. So if any of you want to follow along live, uh, you can go over to this link. So I'll, I'll be trying to more actively push this stuff, uh, but that's where all the source code is going to be. Okay. We've got our Dark Souls controller. So let's see if we can connect over here. Um, our client has this. We do need to go grab these other files and include in project. And these even still have the namespace of the thing we copied before. So let's go see if this is everything it needs. We don't have any errors. Uh, we do have intent requests. Uh, we want to bring in our Alexa.net. Um, dependency as well here because we send along the raw intent request so we'll say alexa.net pull in that sweet sweet free code thank you Tim Hewer and Stephen Pears and everyone else that's worked on it you've made my life so much easier alright this I think is still trying to reference warzone so we should do our find and replace again warzone with dark souls we're doing Dark Souls now. Warzone is old news. Which is just so much better because I just love Dark Souls so much more. Uh, we also need the SignalR client. So let's go back to NuGet packages. We want SignalR client. Uh, we want the ASP.NET Core client. And we also need to match the same version that we're running on our server, which was 303. So we'll add this version to our client app. So now we'll be able to actually connect to our 
SignalR server that's sitting on darksouls.azurewebsites.net from an app running locally. Um, and hopefully that all just uh, works out. So, so far this is looking pretty good. Let's see if we can run it and we'll show you all what it looks like. Dark Souls 2008, Warzone 2000 and late. <laughs> when, when did Dark Souls 1 come out? It was like 2010, 2011? I have I have a taste for older uh, trilogies, that's all. Did it build? Did we get an error? What happened here? Did I just not actually run it? Oh, I don't want to run any CPU. I want to run 64-bit uh, because we're on a, a big boy computer. My machine sounds like it's taking off, which is a good sign. All right, look at that. We ran it, it's our Dark Souls controller. Um, cool. Oh no, wait, I actually just realized I don't have another USB cable for what I'm using here, do I? Oh, shoot. Um, let's see here. If I try to just plug this in. So, the same cable I usually use for my Arduino, I actually just plugged in the uh, the controller there. To that, yeah, I think it is 2000. You know, we're gonna look it up. Hold on. Uh, Dark Souls One release date. I think it's 2011. Except, what? It released on my birthday. I didn't even know that. No wonder why I love it so much. Oh man. Yeah, 2011. DS1's old. Uh, Prepare to Die came out later. This not doxing. I, I want people to know when my birthday is so that they send me birthday presents. Wait, <laughs> that's not the same. Prepare to Die came out later. Yes, I am nine. I was actually born then. I, I've, I've grew up really, really quickly. Okay, I gotta figure out <laughs> a cable situation here. So... I've got this cable, which is normally used to charge my headset, but I think here's what we're going to do. I'm going to actually use this for the controller, I think. All right, so here, here's what's going to happen. When we pull up our client, hopefully anyway, um, when I plug in my Arduino, if I can sort my cables out here, um, plug in my Arduino, we should see it pop up. See, we got there. Select an Arduino device, so now we can actually select it and connect to it. So now we're connected to this, so whenever we get stuff, we can we can run through it. But um, this is what I was just connected to my controller from. So I want to, I got an extra cable here. Uh, it's just USB to micro USB. And hopefully I can plug it in, in the back of my little hub here. Because um, I want to use this one for the Arduino. But this is the one I was using before for my headset connection. So we're going to... We're just going to see if we can <laughs> slide under here. Um, is there another? I think I've got an extra port up here. Hold on. I've got like a thousand things plugged into USB back here. I've got like a, a fan that's blowing in my face at all times because I don't have air conditioning in my basement. I've got um, a face light that's right here. That makes me look pretty even when I have dark theme software running. Um, I've got my stream deck and many, many other things. All right, let's see. I'm going to try plugging this in. All right, we've got we've got a light. All right, cool, yeah. Look at that. The controller even works with uh, moving those buttons. You see the highlights on those buttons? Look at that. Controller support, easy, uh, which means hopefully also now our COM port didn't technically change. So if I re-plug in the Leonardo, please. All right, we, we can now have two controllers plugged in at once. Um, cool, so the way that this app works that we built before is we connect to an Arduino device and we connect to the remote controller, so that's when we connect to our, our hub, our WebSocket connection. Um, so let's go make sure that this is actually connecting to the right thing because it's no longer Dark Souls voice controller. This should just be Dark Souls that Azure websites. And in our startup, this is where we define Oh, actually, we didn't set up the hub yet. We did miss something on our API side. Uh, we don't need to show that. So when we specify our hubs, we need to specify the route that we use to connect to it. So in our in our client code here, 
This is where we're saying, hey, create this connection to the hub, the hub that we registered before on the server, and here's the URL. So we've got that same URL we've been pushing stuff to, but this slash Dark Souls, we haven't told our server where to actually put that yet. Uh, so we need to do that from the startup here. And you can see this is where we have the endpoints uh, for our hub for Warzone controller, where we say connect to slash Warzone for the Warzone hub. So we basically need to do the same thing for Dark Souls uh, in our startup. So in this use endpoints, we're going to say endpoints.map hub. And we'll say this is our Dark Souls hub. Is that what we called it? Yep. And we'll say slash Dark Souls. So we do need to republish this, which is fine. We can click that and then move on over here. And whoops, we're in the middle of building. Let's try that again. Moving a little too fast. All right, publish succeeded. We've got our, our goodness stuff up. Um, so now when we connect, this is all happening in the, the single method that happens when we click that button. So that, that big button that says connect to remote controller, the second we do that, we step through here. And let me set up the breakpoint here just to show you. We'll literally step line by line through it, sort of show you what's going on. Okay, so we've got our connected device here, and that's a whole bunch of other stuff that I won't even get into. But when we connect to remote controller, right, so now we're in this line of code. We build our connection, and now we basically set up a bunch of event handlers. So Whenever our connection is closed, we can say you're disconnected. Uh, when we're reconnected, we can say you are connected. And now this is where we say, hey, when we receive an event that is this name and this data structure, our intent request, do this thing, right? So that's that's where this block is. And essentially, we're just registering them all um, to say for each one of these events, do this method. And it's all inline and sloppy and everything else. So this is where we now say start, and now we're connected. We had no errors. We are actually connected now to our remote controller. The problem is none of this code is built to support what we're doing for Dark Souls. This is all still Warzone stuff. So let, let me just sort of break down the difference here. When we say connection.on, we're saying when this event is sent to us, reload intent. This happens because our Alexa controller says, hey, send down to all of our clients this event name which is the intent name coming from the request so intent request that intent dot name meaning if I say swing essentially what's gonna happen is Alexa is gonna go okay we heard swing let's find out what intent that that matches with that's gonna be right light intent because all the way down here I think it's probably the first thing we added second thing we added we added swing so if I say Alexa tell Dark Souls controller to swing it's gonna go hey, we got the, the right light intent, and it's gonna send that to our API. Our API goes, hey, we got the right light intent, but before we even get into here, send that along to the client. So we send, hey, here's the right light intent, and here's the data, and then we return our response. So now, all the way down in our client while it's running, assuming it's connected, if we have, let me stop debugging here, the right light intent, we are going to hit the uh, right light key. And then we'll even say uh, right light. So, so here's what we can expect. I'm gonna comment this line out. When I run this client locally, I've only changed one of the intents. So I've only changed the right light. I'm not gonna bother connecting to a device, but I'll connect to the remote controller. We'll skip through all this code because now you all get it. So we're connected. Now, we have this command log set up, and that's where we say down here, command log.txt plus equals backslash n, that's a new line, right light. So whenever we get the right light intent, put this text into this field. So if I say, hopefully, Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to swing. Light attack. Look at that, right light written right here. So now the next step is to actually send this along over serial. So that's what this hit key method does. Essentially, this is a, a whole bunch of code, and if you're not familiar with serial, we did do, uh, do a pretty in-depth in breakdown on the Warzone controller stream, and, and all those videos are up on YouTube and on Twitch. But essentially what we say is we have this string command. So in this case, this would be write light, lowercase r, capital L. 
and we basically say like hey whatever data uh, serial connection we're connected to send the command with a new line and this new line is important because that's what we tell our Arduino what we want to listen to so let's go actually deploy the Arduino code and this is where we actually tell our our true USB controller what to do um, so let's do this I'm gonna copy this and we're going to create a new sketch we're gonna paste it all there and we're gonna save it so we're gonna go to our and no one comment about how uh, little space I have left we got projects we've got Dark Souls controller source we're gonna create a new folder here called Arduino and this is gonna be our Dark Souls uh, controller Arduino code right so in here this is where we can say hey when we get right light call uh, right light attack so instead of reload we got rid of that now this is where this this key that we send here is as if we actually hit that key on a real keyboard so it's important to make sure we get the right keystroke uh, so for send basic key command, we can customize the key bindings in Dark Souls because normally it's a mouse click, and I'm not sure what that mechanism is going to look like. Maybe we need it. Let's keep Dark Souls running because I think we can run this stuff without it crashing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually spin up Dark Souls, um, and then we'll Alt Tab back to this, and we'll we'll be able to start trying some stuff out. Um, but let's just say for now, if we get the, let me switch back to it, if we get the right light command, we want to do a right light attack, let's just say we send P, just lowercase p, that's what we want to send. Now I want to build this and I want to upload it to my Arduino. This does mean now that I'm doing this, I can't use the same board for my Warzone control. I'll have to switch back to deploying the Warzone code to it, which is fine. It's as easy as opening that file and saying, deploy it. All right, did we upload it? Upload is not successful. Are we still connected over here? Are we just not connected at all? Upload. Compiling. Looks like we got some issue. Uploading. Are we not on COM8? Is that the issue? Let's do this. Port. We do have COM8, Arduino Leonardo, and it's a Leonardo. Um. Invalid conversion from void pointer to void pointer function setup line 41. Let's see, what did we do wrong here? Right light, right light attack. Is that now what we changed this to? Right light attack. That should be fine. Set default handler on something didn't. Oh, 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 oh. We have a library we have to add here. Um, so in our Warzone controller one that we just all shamelessly copied again, we've actually got some code here. Let me pull it up. I'm just going to pull it up in File Explorer real quick. Um, we basically need to actually pull in a reference uh, to a library we use. And I don't know where it went. And that's how we actually handle the serial command. Basically, what it's the issue that we're getting is that this doesn't exist because this is coming from a different library. And the code we took literally says, oh, it's from github.com. Like, super useful. Um, all of this code that we pull in is usually from GitHub. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm just going to search my downloads without showing you all because there's some work stuff in here. Um, let's see, we want, what is it called, serial? Maybe it's in there. Here we go. I'm going to copy this into the actual project. And I think, I think, yes. Okay, so what I can do is say, um, manage libraries. We should have serial. Hmm. Doesn't like that. All right. 
Let's see, file. There's something in here. Basically, we include library. That's what we want. Add zip library. Now this is where I'm going to go to my project all the way in to projects and Dark Souls controller and source and Arduino and there it is that's our serial command library we want I think anyway I think that's the right one name already exists cool can I just add it then can we just do that help me out here stupid thing what do we got serial command is that in here oh there we go yeah just add that <laughs> work stuff uh, <laughs> yes it's all doki doki I can explain no we don't want software serial so that's, that's not even the right one anyway um, sketch include live in come on menus please this one serial commands yeah we already have it all right verify excuse me Have emojis. James, are you gonna gift sub so people can have more emojis? James, give me your give me your your prime subs. I need the three dollars a month. Okay, I'm not. Okay, I'm not sure why this isn't actually uh, giving me the thing. It did verify earlier. Is this really commands? Stop. What is this? Why does it keep doing this? Stop. Oh wait, this is Warzone controller. Why am I even doing this? And this one. This is serial software, serial command. All right, get this out of here. I don't need it anymore. Dark Souls controller is what I want. Verify. Right. This is where I want to include library. And we want to include. Come on. Stop. Oh. Serial commands. Show feet. No. <laughs> I'm wearing matching socks. It, it's not. It's not normal me. Okay. This is still just being. Why do I have both of these? Why do you. Why do you do this to me? James, if you give subs to everyone else in chat that's not one of your user accounts, then I'll show my feet. Okay, this is... Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Oh, wait, it uploaded it anyway. Just ignored the error. All right, hold on. Let's see if this works. <laughs> oh, my. James is James Nini's executioner, Ken Dog, and Carbon. And, like, the other 30 people that have stopped by in chat and been weirded out by you asking for my feet. <laughs> all right here's what we're gonna do anyway we're gonna connect to our device we're still connected to the remote controller so hopefully if i say right light we'll type p because that's what we set up for right light attack um and we got the send basic key so i'm literally gonna leave it in the editor we won't even get into the game hopefully this will work alexa tell dark souls controller to attack light attack well, I guess not. Feels like it's not actually uploading properly because it's not actually compiling. Okay. Invalid conversion from void with a pointer to void with a constant character and set default command. Mm -hmm. Is that the only issue here? Can I just can I just get rid of this? Go away. I don't even need you, default. That worked. Okay, fine. Whatever. It, it must have just picked up a different version. All right, so now we're uploading. Oh, it's going to have an issue uploading. Can we connect? Please? Oh, that's why we're not even connecting properly. We did get our right light, though, which is good. Um. Okay. Let's figure out why we're not connecting. Hmm. Why? 
say SpongeBob. Let's uh, let's just run it from scratch here. Dark Souls client. What am I missing here? If I run the Warzone client. <laughs> one one winged angel hush thank you for the follow okay I can connect on this one alright so something's just different beyond warzone controller and Zachary Partish thank you for the follow Welcome to the Swab Squad, according to James, which I'm just going to have to stick with that. And Hannah, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Swab Squad. Okay, let's see here. We're just having an issue actually connecting to the device. And still all me. I had a feeling, James. I had a... The viewer count didn't go up, but weirdly, more followers. Strange. <laughs> Carbon, thank you for the follow, even though you've been in chat all day. Appreciate it. Oops, I accidentally changed my DPI. Aloui1, thanks for the follow. Hey, Zach. Hey, what's up? I joined Cormar in 2018, so yeah, hopefully I can be kind to you because I've been more than kind to others, so yeah. Hey, man, that's awesome. Cora is... is fantastic um i don't know if she told you we're we're somewhat related obviously working on very different things um you know if you have questions as we we go through and and build some stuff here uh feel free to ask in chat but essentially just to sort of recap all the new people who who hopped in here um we're we're building a voice based controller to let us play dark souls um so essentially what we want to be able to do is use devices like Alexa based ones like this one this is an echo dot I've got some more in the back corner to actually be able to control our character when we play Dark Souls so being able to say things like roll or attack or uh, parry and all those sort of mechanisms so we've got Dark Souls up we're actually really close to being able to do and actually execute some of these commands so you all kind of came at a great time um, we've already done a similar thing for Call of Duty uh, where we have the ability to like put on shields and shoot and reload and all that using our voice and then we'll also get into doing it uh, with a custom voice assistant that will build just for Dark Souls uh, to be able to handle all of the cool uh, sort of behind the scenes natural language understanding and, and automatic speech recognition um, to be able to, to process all that stuff on the fly without having to say like Alexa, blah blah blah. Like if I just say roll, 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 my guy should be able to roll. Lullaby by Nickelback from Alex's Spotify. Oh no, Alexa, stop! <laughs> We're not listening to Nickelback on this channel. So yeah, I'm gonna mute that for now. So at this point, we are we're trying to basically wrap up, um, being able to send that stuff over. Uh, to our Arduino controller. Basically, we've got this little little baby computer here, a little Arduino Leonardo. Um, and we're going to try to wrap up sending commands to it and we're just trying to figure out why when I say connect we're not connecting uh, so what we're gonna do is go to our main page here so if you said Alexa what is your favorite NFL team she will say I'm originally from Seattle so my favorite team is the Seahawks um, oh so I've listened to Nickelback no James I don't listen to Nickelback <laughs> she wanted to hear me play lullaby um, but yeah, I mean, like we're, we're I'm trying to sort of show everyone how to do custom things with Alexa, teach it how to do stuff using code, and and really do really cool integrated stuff. So at this point, we're trying to do it to be able to help play video games, especially for <laughs> followed, especially for those um, who are less capable of playing video games the way that some of us can that have all of our dexterous fingers and and all that. So. You know, I have the ability to play with an Xbox controller or, or a keyboard and mouse, and I can play video games pretty well. I'm usually pretty trash at most of them, but, um, you know, I can play Dark Souls and I can play Call of Duty very well. But for others, they have a little bit more challenge doing that. Um, so they, they want to be, or I want to be able to make it possible for them to use both whatever they can use physically as well as use their voice if they're able to do that as well. 
Uh, so that's sort of one of the, the underlying goals here. We've done it for Call of Duty. We're working on it for Dark Souls. And really, these are all just sort of uh, trials or, or proofs of concepts for us to try out different styles of game with this sort of architecture we have in place, drawn beautifully in, in paint. Here, here's what we're here's what we're building, um, so we can do it at scale and actually start to send people some of these devices and just sort of let them run with it and, and play video games, you know, the way that everyone likes to play them. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we're really close to doing it with Dark Souls. Uh, that we copied a whole bunch of stuff from our Call of Duty things, but basically um, we're just at the point of our connection not working the way we want it to. So we're going to work through that. So, picking up where we left off, this is where I want to put a breakpoint, and let's run it locally. So what we can do here is I, I've got a breakpoint on line 343, meaning that whenever I execute my code and it hits this line of code, we can actually step through it. So this connect to device click is basically bound to our actual button. So if we go to the actual, this is what our markup is that designs our UI. We have a few different buttons here, disconnect and connect. So this button here, connect to device that says connect to device this click is what we have connect to device underscore click and that's where we have our breakpoint connect to device underscore click so that means when I click connect to device now we're here we can see our little arrow here that means we can start to step through um, so we can look at our selection we can make sure that we actually have something Right, so we've got our entry, which means we should have the information about the device we're trying to connect to. Uh, we've got USB, we've got the right name, it's over the right port. We've got a, a handler for on device connected, which I'm going to go put a breakpoint on, and on device closing. And basically, we want to see open success, and this is false. But why? Open device async. We got the right device information. I hope. It's an Arduino Leonardo. That's true. And we've got our device selector. Why are we not able to connect? Hmm. Are we not actually running this from the iPhone? Thank you. It's uh, I love this shirt. It's a whole bunch of flowers and stuff all over it. Okay, so for some reason we're not connecting. But in the Warzone <laughs> controller with the exact same code, we are able to connect. So let's go take a look at what might be different here. Um, it might just be that we're connected somewhere else right now. So we got serial monitor up. We are on COM8. We are recognizing it. Let's see. Yeah, why isn't this successful? Vent handler for device. I'm going to um, unplug it and replug it in, and then we'll also rerun this. So I'm going to unplug it, replug it in. Now I'll try running it again. Step, 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 step. False. Why? Hmm. see what other methods we have here so if we have um, oh you know what it is we don't have permission for serial stuff in our packages at manifest if I open this um, here say view code it's a bunch of XML stuff there's extra permissions we need here in order to actually communicate over serial so serial is a protocol for how we actually um, send information over a wire it's it's a very simple and very old protocol actually um, but in order to allow our app to do it uh, we need to add this device capability to say that hey our app is going to be allowed to talk over serial communication over any serial port so what I want to do is grab this and then on this side 
slap it in there. One time I was watching a funny YouTube video. Someone said to an Alexa, "It's like go pack go." And then after she said, "My favorite team is the Seahawks." The owner that owns Alexa throws it out. <laughs> We're getting a Google Home. I believe it. <laughs> They uh they do some really funny stuff with Alexa, um, like during like holiday seasons and stuff, uh, that are that are pretty funny, um, but yeah, I mean it's it's made by a, a team in Seattle, but it's funny because a lot of the Alexa software team is in the Boston area, um, so you'd think they'd be Patriots fans, but Seahawks it is. Oh look at that, we got our on device connected, so we are we are connected here. Okay, let me remove these breakpoints. We don't really need them anymore. Um, and we'll say continue and we'll connect to our remote controller okay so now here's what I'm going to do I'm going to open up notepad so I can type all day in here now again what we what should happen is if I say attack should hit the light attack and we should type the letter P that's what we're hoping for Alexa tell Dark Souls controller to attack Light attack. There it is. We're all connected. Never saw this yet. Yeah, they also did the thing with Alexa with like the celebrity voices. Uh, that was Alexa, right? Um, I can't remember if that was during the Super Bowl ad or not. But they had like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, she lost her voice. Yes, I'm thinking of the same thing. Yeah. She can highlight my message. Hey James, thanks for the hundred bits. I don't know if I have a, uh, let me make sure that the alert box is actually working f for um, cheersing. Cause that should have, that should have shown something there. Huh. Here, if I test this, let's see. Let me know if this shows up. Yeah, see, that should have worked with your, with your little highlight messages. I don't know why it didn't. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll try to call it out though if it doesn't show up. Um, okay, so we've got the full sort of process here now where we have in our Dark Souls controller the ability to, um, let's see, it's gonna be up here in our button click. When we say attack, we get the right light intent and we hit the right light command to our Arduino over serial and this will send the P key to us. So. Let's hop into Dark Souls. And I'm going to bind light attack to P. Um, hopefully that it lets me do that. We'll say continue. Okay, so we just need to go to our key bindings. So if we go to settings, uh, key, where's our key bindings? This. Okay, so we want eat sword master with your voice. <laughs> yeah. Attack, right? So keyboard. Can I do this? Can I say cool, there isn't one yet either, so that's good. P. Alright, ready? I'm gonna let's try this out. So I can uh, I can swing with my hands, I can hit right bumper, and I can press P on the keyboard. Now let's try this out. Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to swing. Alexa, oh, she's muted. Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to swing. Light attack. Oh no, did it ignore it? We did get it. Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to swing. Alexa, tell Dark Souls controller to swing. Light attack. Hmm.